and welcome to another tutorial in math. Our topic for the day is about the introduction of quadratic function. So, gagamit lang ako ngayon ng cellphone dahil andito yung PowerPoint ko. Ayan. So, ayan. Tapos, dito ko na lang i-attach yung uh, clip ng PowerPoint ko. Okay, so... Let's start. The objective of these lessons are first, differentiate quadratic function from linear function. Second, represent and identify quadratic function using table of values, graph, and equation. So when we say quadratic function, it is defined and expressed in a form of f of x is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c wherein f of x is also equal to y, so we can have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to 0. So why can't the leading coefficient be 0? So ito yung mangyayari sa equation kung ang leading coefficient natin, which is 0, I mean, which is a, is equal to 0. So as you can see, it will become a linear form because the highest exponent there is 1. Okay, state whether each of the following equation represents a quadratic function or not and justify your answer. Okay, so the following equation represents a quadratic functions are f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 4, y is equal to 7 minus 3x squared plus x, and y is equal to 4 minus 3x plus x squared. Why? Because, as you can see on the following equation, the highest exponent or, or the highest degree of exponent is 2. Therefore, based on the given example of quadratic function quadratic function is a second degree function while linear functions are a first degree function and one way to tell if a function is a quadratic is by looking at the second differences of the y values let us take a look at the standard form of a quadratic function where a is equals to 1 and b and c are both zeros so, what we get is y is equal to x squared. Let us use this as our simple example to explore what second differences are. So, the way we find them is by first creating a table with the x and y values of this equation. Just make sure that the x values are evenly spread out. So, in this example, the x values are consecutive, so they go up by 1. But, if we wanted to, we could go up by 2s, by 3s, or even any number, as long as they are consistent. So, from here, let us add two more columns in our table which we will name as first differences and second difference. Now, to fill in the rest of the rows of this first differences column, what we would do is get the second y values and then subtract it to the first y values and this gives us the difference of two values. So as you can see, we get 3. So do this for several pairs of y values. For example, the next one would be to get the third y values and then subtract it by the second y values, value sorry, 
So we write down their first difference again. Okay, so try doing this for two or more pairs of values and compute the first difference. Okay, so that's it. Now that now that we've got our first difference values, let us do the same thing that we did in this column. Only this time, let us do it over here on the second difference column. So this is how we could get our second difference. So again, we can just do second value minus first value and so on and so forth. So what we should notice for quadratic function is that the second difference will always a constant and this applies with all quadratic function. Note that the second difference of a zero is not a quadratic function. Instead, it's a linear function because it means that the first differences are constant. So ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag daw, yung second differences ay mag-equal to zero, ibig sabihin, yung function na yun is not an example of quadratic function. Ito ay matatawag nating linear function. Let's see what's the graph of a quadratic function. We can expect that the graph of a linear function may be look like this. And you can expect the quadratic function to look more like a u, like this. One other way to refer to the graph that represents a quadratic function is a parabola. Now, depending on the exact equation, a parabola can either be pointing up or down. It can be either be wider or narrower. And of course, it doesn't need to necessarily have to start at the origin. It can start at anywhere else as well. Let's take a look at the standard parabola y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c wherein the value of a is equal to 1 and b and c is equal to 0. What we get is y is equal to x squared and the graph would really look like this. Well, if you plug in the numbers for x, you would get this particular graph. If you substitute 0 for x, you will get 0 for y. If you substitute 1 for x, you will get 1 for y. And if you substitute 4 for x, you will get 4 for y. Now, what about the other side? If you substitute negative 1 for x, you'll get negative 1 for y. If you substitute negative 2 for x, you'll get positive 4 for y. Notice how we plugged in negative number and get the same value as we plugged in the positive number. Now, this point over here is called the vertex. And like what we mentioned before, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the origin if the parabola opens up the vertex is at the minimum point or shall i say the lowest point on the graph if it's opening down the vertex will be the maximum point or should i say the highest point on the graph 
You also notice how the parabola is symmetrical to itself when it is seen as the hubs. So this imaginary vertical line that divides the symmetry of this parabola is called the axis of symmetry. So the graph of a linear function is a straight line based on our illustration and the graph of a quadratic function is a smooth curve or a parabola.